How's it going everyone? It's Harvey from Weather Sponge 5000 and in this video we're of course going to talk about Hurricane K and determine if this does have the possibility to make history as being one of the only tropical cyclones to impact California by this weekend. But before I begin, make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather related content. So let's begin by taking a look at the water vapor imagery for Hurricane K which has just been upgraded into a hurricane in the eastern Pacific and now we do see a very well defined fine area of rotation and a very nice and closed small center of circulation which shows that this storm is definitely fairly well organized and it's definitely strengthening by the amount of convection that's happening right around the center of circulation at this time and we do see there isn't a lot of dry air either so it's only going to continue strengthening as this heads further northward as really the only inhibiting factor that would prevent this from shutting will be the cooler waters of the Pacific but that might not be enough to completely weaken this storm by the time it reaches Southern California which is definitely a major concern and of course we could potentially see major impacts for the western coast of Mexico associated with Hurricane K as it continues to strengthen potentially into a major hurricane which is definitely a major concern we do have some clouds drifting to the east um as a result of an upper level high that's just a north of it but is it imposing strong enough upper level winds to really disorganize the storm so as a result it's going to have an open area to continue strengthening which is definitely a major concern as the storm continues ahead further northward now take a look at what the computer models are stating so of course yesterday we had both the gfs and the european model wanting to take this storm fairly far up north and impacting the western portion of Mexico where we where we are seeing some impacts towards Baja California and not much has changed compared to yesterday we still have the GFS model wanting to strengthen this a major hurricane status where we see the millibar pressure drop down to 954 millibars which is equivalent to category 3 or category 4 hurricane and we do see that it's not only the wind speed strength that's very um that's very concerning with this storm it's also the sheer size and how large this wind field is which is only concerning especially because that it's more likely to impact a larger area and a larger population since wind field is so large so even if the storm doesn't directly make landfall anywhere around baja california or it stays fairly far from southern california this storm will have such a large wind field and such a large area where the rain associated with the storm um associated with the storm will move far apart that you're gonna experience impacts even if you're hunt potentially hundreds of miles away from the center of circulation which is definitely a major concern and of course since the wind feels larger the there's more likely of a shot that the waves will be larger as well but we do see a gfs model wanting to take this storm further northward at around major hurricane status and then it of course weakens as it heads further northward the sea surf temperatures do cool down below the 80 degree threshold which is needed for tropical cyclones to continue to strengthen but we still do see that even as this heads for northward into the cooler um, eastern pacific waters the storm still is able to maintain its strength to where it's still at around the 970s in terms of millibar pressure and what's crazy is that it isn't that far from the Mexico california border as you see that san diego is right there which is almost unheard of when it comes to a tropical cyclone um this um, strong being this far up north close to california which is definitely a concern especially for areas that typically don't experience tropical cyclones like this this far northward but we do see a gfs model is pretty much wanting to hug this storm along the baja mexico oh, coast without necessarily making landfall but we still do see that this storm would be close enough to where baja california would experience major impacts associated with it when it comes to rainfall wind as well as of course storm surge so you need to i'd say prepare along the western coast of baja california because it's likely you will experience impacts and even the eastern coast of baja california you're likely to experience some impacts as well when it comes to heavy rain as well as stronger winds because we still could see those strong winds move into the gulf of california which is definitely something you need to prepare for um, along Baja, Cal uh, along both Baja California coast. So make sure to pay close attention to that. And 
Um, if we were to continue move northward, we do see that the GFS model is still leaning on taking this just westward before this reaches Southern California, um, right around San Di um, before it reaches close to the San Diego area. However, it is a little bit concerned because with the latest run of the GFS model, the 18Z run, um, the, the um, GFS model was leaning towards turning this westward a little bit later than initially anticipated, which could mean that we could see a trend where this could move further northward and impact more of Southern California before this eventually takes a turn westward. Now, this is as a result of a, um, this as a result um, it, because the GFS model um, expects there to be a little bit more a weakness in ridging towards Southern California than before because of course we see that big ridge just to north there we do have a small ridge that's turning this northwestward but this will be the ridge that's eventually going to turn this westward but the big question remains when will it take that westward turn because if it does take that westward turn earlier then you're less likely to experience any impacts around Southern California. I'd say you'll still experience some heavy rainfall and maybe some rough surf, but that's about it. But if the westward turn were to happen a little bit later, then of course the impacts would be far worse where flooding is far more likely as well as potentially rough surf and um, gusty winds could be possible as well towards the San Diego region. So we're gonna need to see how this ridge builds over the next several days to really determine when and will it take that westward turn to really determine the impact Southern California will face as this um, Hurricane K continues to turn northward. Now, the key, so let me zoom out a little bit to show you guys the entirety of North America. So the key that will determine how much of a weakness in ridging there will be in Southern California will be this trough that's going to dip down the mid um, through the Midwestern portion of the United States. If this if this trough ends up being a little bit stronger and this um, trough dips a little bit further southward, it would weaken this ridge enough to where this storm wouldn't turn west until later, which would impact more of Southern California. So really, the key will be all on this trough, depending on how far south it dips and depending on how powerful this trough will be, that will determine how strong the ridging will be to determine when this will turn westward. If it turns westward further northward, you're more likely to experience impacts in Southern California. So we're gonna need to pay close attention to this trough over the next one to two days to really determine the track of this storm. So definitely something we're gonna pay close attention to over the next several days. But even but let's say the GFS model maintains its forecast that um it, that let's say the forecast this forecast that the GFS model is currently forecasting will happen exactly the way it should. So if we, we so even if it that were the case, we'd still experience heavy rain towards Southern California and of course rough surf associated with the waves around um um, with Hurricane K or Tropical Storm K, whatever this is by the time this reaches this far up north. But um, you still should expect heavy rain and potentially gusty winds closer to the California-Mexico border. So, um, and in some areas, you could almost get a year's worth of rainfall in one shot in some areas of the California and um, potentially the Arizona desert because um, that, because Palm Springs, California, it only averages five inches of rain per year. While I'm not saying you'll necessarily experience five inches of rain just like that, there's still easily a possibility that depending on how far west this, um, east this moves, you could experience two to three inches of rain. So it's suddenly something to pay close attention to because it could cause a major flood threat for Southern California um, if this were to move fairly close to you guys. So definitely something to keep in mind. And of course, um, the rough surf will be another issue you're going to have to contend with. So, um, def so definitely pay close attention to this if you're in Southern California. And of course, Baja, California is more likely to experience direct impact. So make sure to pay close attention to that. In terms of the strength, it seems like this will strengthen the European model still isn't as lenient on strengthening this because it expects a little bit more dry air to entrain this storm, which um, will be another thing to it's going to have to contend with because of course since you're in a drought there's so much dry air 
as the storm continues to head further northward. So we're going to need to see how much dry air entrains the storm to really determine the strength of this. But we still do see the European model is also leaning towards bringing this storm fairly close to Southern California, which is definitely a pretty big concern. So we're going to need to watch out over the next several days. But as of right now, it seems like direct um, that Baja California should prepare now for potentially major impacts because you could experience a category two or even a major hurricane fairly close to you guys. The wind field will be large large enough to where you could experience serious impacts especially along western the western coast of Baja California so make sure to prepare accordingly because this storm is suddenly something you don't want to play with and for Southern California it's at least something to be aware of at this time at the very least you should expect heavy rain um, rough surf and potentially gusty winds but it could potentially be worse if this were to take a track further eastward we're just gonna need to wait and see how this ridge builds over the next several days now take a look at what the ensemble members are stating and we do see that a gfs model wants to take a track for eastward and while the good news is that it does at least take it fairly far Oh, um, a lot of the spaghetti models take it fairly far away from um, the Southern California coast. Um, um, for one thing is that the wind field will be large enough to where California will still experience heavy rain and potentially gusty winds with it. And another thing is that this still easily could change depending on the position of this ridge and how much how strong this ridge will be because there is still that possibility we could see that forecast shift so don't underestimate this storm just yet for southern california and baja metzco because we still could see some variations in the forecast and we do see that the gfs model wants to strengthen this a little bit more than the european model but both are agreeing that this will at least be maybe a category two hurricane at the minimum and potentially this could go as high as category three or category four strength if the gfs model ends up being the, um the more correct um the more correct solution for hurricane k now take a look at the forecast of rainfall over the next 120 hours and we do see um that baja california should easily experience over five inches of rain potentially five to eight inches of rain over a large portion of Baja California and um, we do see a little bit further northward we do see some areas receiving one to two inches of rain in Southern California and this is over the desert region region so it won't take a lot to cause some flash flooding so if you live in a flood prone area you want to prepare accordingly and plus I do expect this rain total to increase over the next several days of course once we approach a time frame where the where the storm is five days away from impacting Southern California so um, I do expect this rain total to increase so that the chance of flooding should also increase as the days go on as well. But we're just going to need to wait and see how far east the storm will exactly move to really determine how much rain you're ex um, bound to experience. But make sure to prepare for the possibility of flash flooding for Southern California and even Arizona now. Um, Another thing I want to show you guys is the wave forecast over the next several days because this will be another thing um, you're going to need to worry about through Baja California and uh, um, Southern California and Southern California. And we do see that the um, the waves, of course, will weaken as the storm weakens, but we could see higher swells along the coast, which could cause a high rip current risk and a heavy wave that so it's suddenly something to pay close attention to right around Southern California because this could potentially bring major impacts when it comes to waves and rip currents. So definitely pay close attention to that over the next several days. Now, here's my forecast when it comes to Hurricane K, when it comes to the track and strength forecast. So I am expecting this to strengthen into a major hurricane by the Wednesday time frame at around 120 miles per hour. And this could come um, uncomfortably close to Baja California. So you need to prepare for heavy rain, flooding, um, stay, of course, stay out of the waters, obviously, um, because um, this could be life threatening at times, depending on how sh um, close this could um, um, come along the coast, which is certainly possible, which is certainly more likely at this point that you it's going to come close enough to where you're going to experience major impacts through the west coast of Mexico. So make sure to prepare accordingly. And for Southern California, the forecast is still uncertain. At this point, it seems like the 
forecast is leaning towards this staying offshore of Southern California, but you still um, could experience impacts when it comes to heavy rain and gusty winds. I'd say more likely than not, you will at least experience some impacts associated with Hurricane K or Tropical Storm K, which I'm expecting this to weaken to a tropical storm by the time this reaches the Southern California area, but it's still extremely rare for a tropical storm or a tropical cyclone um, to come this far up north. So it could be historic on um, what Southern California will experience as Hurricane K continues to move northward and potentially not lose its strength by the time it reaches um, the San Diego area. So that's gonna be something that is quite interesting with this storm that it's gonna do potentially some historic things as this heads for northward. But anyways, guys, I think you guys watch, make sure to subscribe if you wanna see more weather causing. I hope you guys have a great day.